Hey everybody, this is Kevin E here for you for another One Piece episode review. This is because, you know, One Piece is on break this week, so I'm doing a One Piece episode in its place. This is going to be episode 7, titled Epic Showdown, Swordsman Zoro vs. Acrobat Chibuchi. So let's get into it. The episode starts off with a little recap, and then, it, no, sorry, it starts off with the opening, then there's a little recap. Right after that, we start off right where we left off with Buggy choking out the mayor. Luffy took his hand off of the mayor. Buggy reattacks his hand and starting to yell at Luffy, Zoro, and Nami. And then the mayor gets back up and he starts coughing. And he's not like yelling, but he's telling Zoro, Nami, and Luffy to leave because they're outsiders. This isn't, this isn't their town. He wants to fight Buggy all by himself because this is his fight. And they all just look at him. Then Luffy <laughs> just grabs him by the head and it slams him against the wall and passes out. Obviously, Nami is spazzing. Like, why the heck did you? <laughs> why the heck did you just knock out the mayor? And so I went, hmm, that's a pretty good idea. And, you know, if you would have kept fighting Buggy, he probably would have died. So you know, knocking him out, not a bad idea. <laughs> Nami said, I mean, I mean, I guess for this would have been enough. This there had to be another way to like make him not fight Buggy. About knocking him out, you know, because Luffy grabbed him and just slammed him hard against the wall. He did it pretty hard. And after that, Buggy gets mad. And oh yeah, also, I'm gonna forget this moment. I'm gonna forget this moment. Um, right after that, Buggy starts yelling at them, and then we get this wide shot of Luffy in the middle and Zoro and Nami. And Zoro looks over at, I mean, Nami looks over at Zoro and says, "I'm just here for the treasure." And the map, got it? And Zoro just standing like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, okay. Anyway, right after that, Buggy gets mad and, comp and commands his uh, men to shoot the Buggy Ball. And that's exactly what they do. They get it, put it into the, into the cannon. Nami runs away because obviously we saw last episode how devastating one Buggy Ball is. And Zoro like, come on, Luffy, we got to go. Luffy says, nah, I'm good. I got it. You can go ahead, though. They shoot the Buggy Ball. Luffy goes, goes gum gum. <gasps> Balloon and catches it and flings it right back at him and it explodes. We don't see like because the explosion from last not last time we I was gonna say last week the explosion from last time we saw the boogie ball explode. We saw it, it it like tore apart like half the town. It like it tore apart half the town in one shot. This time we see it explode. We don't see like that huge explosion to where it tears apart the other half. I mean like it's like because it doesn't look that big until we see the aftermath to where yeah it destroyed like the whole building they were standing on. And everything, so it didn't really like look that big. So we didn't see that same animation scene from the last time where like it was like that big, like coming out the hub beam just going through the town. We didn't see that again, but you know it's still a buggy ball, so it still did, it still did the exact same amount of damage. I guess the animators were like, you know, you you guys already know what it does, so you already know how devastating this is. So we can see it explode, but we don't see that exact. Sorry, <laughs> you can hear me running out of breath for like no reason. <clears throat> Um, it doesn't like they, they also that exact same animation scene where like boom, just goes across half the town. We don't see that again, and I didn't expect myself to remember all that. So let me cut to where I was. <clears throat> anyway, we cut to see that Buggy is completely fine. How is he fine? He grabbed two of his men and used them as a meat shield, and then uh, uh this is sorry, <laughs> he used them as a meat shield. And then we cut to that lion tamer dude. He wakes up and he's looking for a lion. And we find out that Kabuchi, he did the exact same thing that Boogie did. He grabbed the lion tamer's lion and used it as a meat shield. So now he, sorry, so now him and Buggy are completely fine from the explosion. The lion tamer dude got hit from the explosion. Like he's a, but he's completely fine. He, he just wakes up. He goes, what the, where's my lion? With my life, he, uh, he's just looking around for it. So he was completely fine. He, he's pretty durable. <laughs> he's pretty durable. And then we cut back to Nami and Luffy. Nami's freaking out because she like, how in the like, you know, like you, you just like inflated your whole body. How did you do that? Like she's spagging and Luffy. Like, how in the world did you do that? You freak. He's like, oh that. That was a gum gum balloon. He said, I'm not asking about the attack. I'm asking how in the world did you do that? And then when the lion team and dude wakes up. He yells at Kabuchi for obviously using his lion as a meat shield. Kabuchi punches him. He flies to the side. Then he yells at Buggy. Not yet, not yelling at him, but telling Buggy, Buggy, look, that's the that's the dude that beat me up. He has some sort of weird rubber power. He can like switch his limbs. And Buggy's like, oh, well, oh, so he got a devil fruit. And I mean, like devil fruit. He goes, yep. <laughs> he goes, yep. I ate the gum gum fruit. The gum gum fruit, huh? He's like really confused. And we cut to. 
where it was. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you a comic sheet in a moment. Don't worry. Buggy Gramson. No, no, no. My bad. Um, yeah, yeah. Buggy grabs the Lion Tamer dude and throws him, and he goes towards Luffy. And the Lion Tamer dude is saying, "Get out the way." And Luffy's like, "No, you get out the way." So Luffy kicks him to the side. So the Lion Tamer dude is out, and then Kawachi he says, "Captain Buggy." Let me take care of these riff raps. He says, go ahead and make it a good show, Kabuchi. And Kabuchi gets on top of a unicycle and charges at Luffy with a sword. Right before he hits Luffy, Zoro comes in and blocks it. He says, let me take care of this guy. Obviously, Zoro, I mean, not, I mean, obviously, Luffy and Nami like, hey, you sure you want to, you know, take this guy on? You have a pretty bad injury on your side. And Kabuchi notices that, too. So he uses Acrobat Flame, and he breathes fire because he, like, has a scarf on. He pulls the scarf down. And breathe fire in front of Zoro's face. Zoro's like, ah, and then he kicks Zoro in the side. And then they're like, come on, man. Like, you know, you're doing like, that's some cheap stuff going right for his injury, like right on the side. Obviously, that hurts him, and he's on the ground. The copy she goes, Acrobat Windmill, and he starts to like twist his sword around like a like a spear. Like, you know, when those people with spear like twist it around. He does that, and it kicks up a bunch of dust in the air, and Zoro can't see him. And Zoro's like, Acrobat. You kidding me? You just swing your sword around, and then he may, he comes out of nowhere in the dust and stabs Zoro. He tries to stab Zoro, and Zoro blocks it. But then he kicks him right in the side again, and he's yelling again. And I'm just like, "Come on, that's 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 cheap stuff. What are you doing? That's not fair." And let me show you guys when um he went to go attack Luffy because it was a pretty cool scene. Luffy just standing there out of nowhere. Zoro like, "Let me take care of this guy." Like he blocks it, and uh, let me slow down my speech actually <laughs> because I don't y'all can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear it. I'm uh, running out of breath for like no reason. I'm talking kind of fast. I'm sorry for that. I don't really need to speed it up for y'all. The cool scene where he tried to stab Luffy and Zero came in and blocked it. That was pretty cool. That was a cool scene. Whew. Let me put this uh, back on the TV. <laughs> All right. Right after he kicks Zoro in the side for a second time, um, Nami yells at Luffy. And she's like, are you not going to do anything? Like, what's going on? Luffy doesn't say anything. And he just keeps looking at Zoro's fight. And then Zoro finally gets back up. And he says, did you have, a, did you have enough fun poking at my wound? Come on, if you want to do it again, go ahead. And he goes, all right. So Kabuji comes in and full on stabs him in the wound and goes past him. And he's like, what the? And Zoro's still standing up. He said, did you have enough fun doing that? <laughs> you make it like you know he's like he, basically Zoro was like I, I don't know what he said word for word basically basically he was like you know he keeps going after his weak spot so he can win this fight easily so he's always like man go ahead like hit it you can hit my weak spot handicap me all you want but you know I'm gonna become the world greatest swordsman I'm not gonna lose the likes of you especially who does like cheap tricks to like go for the weak spots and stuff like that <laughs> like you're, you're not beating me I mean, you can, you can keep hitting my weak spot all you want. That's why he let him, like, stab it. Like, you see, like, you, you can clearly see I am very handicapped because you keep hitting my weak spot. You stabbed it and watched me still beat you even though you were hitting my weak spot like crazy. And I'm already, you know, even if he didn't hit his weak spot, you know, obviously he's still handicapped because, you know, he was still stabbed either way. But, you know, before he even stabbed himself, he was still stabbed either way. So, he's like, I'm handicapped. I'm going to still beat you either way. I just want you to know that. Like, you know, deep. And Kabuchi gets kind of mad. And he does. And let me look at the subtitle. He throws like a hundred uh, tops at Zoro. But it's like the name. The specific name is something. Because we see Nami. She walks away. Because she says, I don't want to look at this anymore. You guys can kill each other all you want. And then Kabuchi does that top move. And as soon as he throws all the tops, it cuts away. To Nami's thing. So I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> it instantly cuts away because Nami says, all right, I'm leaving. Then we cut the cop and keep throwing the tops. And then we cut, then we just cut away. <laughs> we, just, we just cut away, which sucks. Yeah, he's a taste of my ultimate move. Acrobat, acrobat move. Oh, yeah, it's always like acrobat. He just kicking dust up. Uh, he has the tops. Acrobat technique. The dance of 100... Kazumi Tops. That's the name. Right before they even hit Zoro, he cut to Nami. <laughs> we just cut to Nami sneaking behind Buggy. He finds where the, all the treasure is. Basically, let me just say all the Nami stuff. It cuts from the action back to Nami to the action back to Nami. It's, it's, it cuts so much. But basically, all the, everything that happens with Nami 
is she finds where Buggy hides all his treasures. And there was a dude that was passed out guarding it, but he was passed out because he was drinking so much. She finds the treasure, she's really excited. And then the dude finally wakes up and goes up to Nami, but he's still a bit drunk, so he doesn't really know what's going on. Nami fakes her injury, and while he's like, oh my goodness, are you okay? She brings out her staff, knocks him upside the head, he passes out, and on his necklace are a ton of keys. She takes one of the keys, opens the chest, and inside the chest is the Grand Line map that she stole in the first <laughs> It's the Grand Line map that she stole in the first place. This <laughs> is the map that she stole in the first place and got captured again. It's the Grand Line map. So, <laughs> it's uh, everything she wanted, and she's really happy. So, she takes all the treasure, puts it in a bag, ties it up, and then we do cut back to her again, but I'll get to that because the egg just cut away. So, anyway, we cut back to Zoro, and Zoro is, like, cutting up all the tops that he threw at him, and then he gra he's so fast on this unicycle, he rides up the wall, and he calls this, t he, he calls this technique, like, fire window it's like he calls it something cool but all he really does is just run up the wall with his unicycle and he's coming downwards like you know he's falling out the sky because you know he can't fly so he's falling downwards and he has a sword and then buggy says kabuchi i'll hold him while you kill him he goes okay captain and buggy shoots his hand out and tries to grab zero but luffy stomps on his hand before he even touches him and zero's able to dodge him right before he stabs him on the ground so Thank goodness. And then Buggy, he spazzes at Luffy like, what the heck? He said, you want to fight someone? Fight me. And then we see this cool, like, freeze frame for a second before it goes into the halfway point of the episode. And it plays the wrong music. We see Luffy's wanted poster come up, but it's Zoro's theme. And then we see Luffy's, I mean, then we see Zoro's wanted poster come up, but it's Nami's theme. Like, they, they completely they messed up. They, they they messed up big time. I don't know who was supposed to mix the music with the one supposed to coming up, but it was Zoro's theme with Luffy and then Nami's theme was Zoro. They they did not do that well. <laughs> they did not do that well at all. But here's the cool freeze frame shot of Luffy. He will, you want to fight someone? Fight me. <laughs> Pretty cool shot right there. Pretty cool. Let me put the towel back on the TV. Actually, remember before I do, um, let me get that attack name for y'all, because I bet y'all do want that attack name. Yeah, I hike. Ooh, I clicked off the... <laughs> I clicked off the episode, my bad, y'all. Okay, a hike up the mountain, huh? Fireworks and cool summer breeze. Yeah, he called his name something. I don't know. All he really does is sting of the unicycle. He like All he really do is ride up the wall and see he's coming down now, but he called it all that. <laughs> all that cool naming with just like jumping up in the air basically and coming down with his sword. All that cool naming just for that. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Why, but all right. Sorry, all right. Ridiculous. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. And then we, yeah, we cut to Nami getting the treasure, but I already said all that because it was ridiculous. Anyway. Um, Zaro says, all right, I'm done. He was like, oh, I'm surprised that you made it. So for, he said, he says, I'm done watching this stupid act. He was like, man, Kabishi Chill goes, man, I'm surprised you're even lasting as long with those injuries. He said, you don't get it. I'm done watching you fool around like an idiot with those half-baked sword skills. He gets really mad. And he charges at Zoro. Zoro grabs all three of his swords, one in his mouth, two in his hand. He does this. Oni Giri. And takes him out. And then right before he falls out and passes out, Kabuki says, I can't believe the buggy pirates were beat by some petty thieves. And then he passes out. And right before Zoro passes out, he goes, why not petty thieves? And then he hits the ground. We're pirates. And then he says something pretty funny. He goes, Luffy, I'm, I'm going to sleep. And Luffy goes, all right, I'll finish it from here. <laughs> that was pretty funny. He goes, Luffy, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> he already knew he was done. <sighs> and uh, here's Zoro doing the Onigiri. That was a pretty cool move. A classic, classic move, man. <laughs> that was a classic move. It seemed really new now, but I'm telling you, that, that, that is a classic move, right? Oops. I'm so sorry, yo. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. Here we go. Onigiri. That, that was cool. But look at this. Scoom. Got him. <laughs> Got him. My bad. I clicked the B button by accident. <laughs> I can't believe I clicked the B, but that happens. I don't know why. I don't know why. 
Let me put this back on the TV. <sighs> Probably been talking a bit fast. Uh, I just I was, I was doing some stuff right before this and got out of breath. Let me slow it down for y'all. 15 minutes in, now I slow it down. <laughs> 15 minutes in. Anyway, we cut back to Nami and she had all the treasure in her back. And she was saying, well, maybe I can like team up with him again. Maybe someday. And then she starts to walk away. But then she looks back and she's like, hmm. And then we see her, like, we don't know what she really did. But while Luffy and Buggy are fighting, they see her hiding behind a building. So she came back to see what's going on. She was like, oh, man, they're still fighting. This is crazy. And then she saw Luffy and Buggy fighting. And then Buggy and Luffy start to fight. And it's pretty, pretty funny because Buggy is taking out all his blades in his hand. And he also has some blades on his feet. And then he says that your hat and the way you act reminded me of this red-headed fool I used to know. I'm getting so mad. And Luffy's like, red-headed? Hold up, you talking about my friend Sanks? You know him? And he was like, oh, you know him? Yeah, I know Sanks. We used to be, oh, I, I mean, I used to know him a long time ago. He says, wow, uh, how, how do you know him? And where is he right now? He says, well, let me know, sorry. He said, do you know where Sanks is now? Buggy says, maybe I do, maybe I don't. And Luffy says, did you forget or something? He goes, no, you're going to have to work for that type of information. Then they start to fight. Like I said, Boogie has some blades on his feet. So he disconnects his lower half and throws it at Luffy. Like, and he's and spinning around. Plus, it has blades on it. So, you know, Luffy has a dog. So he jumps up in the air to dodge his feet. And then Buggy goes, uh-oh, you can't dodge midair. And he throws all his knives he has. And then Luffy stretches out his arm, grabs a piece of wood, and reels himself in this way to dodge those blades coming out of He goes, oh, you're pretty nimble. So he calls his torso back and his hands back. And then Buggy... <laughs> that buggy Luffy does a gum gum pistol and then buggy dies he's like uh oh that's some pretty neat power you get but it leaves yourself open he brings up some more blades and he goes to cut his arm but right before he cuts his arm Luffy rails himself in to like do this to buggy uh, neck but then buggy just disconnects his head throws it up in the air and Luffy misses and he hicks some rebel and then we also like cut to some of buggy pirates they wake up and they're like wow he's really taking on the captain this is crazy and then some other dude was like, hey, man, go pretend to be docked out. And we try to interfere with this fight. We're going to die. <laughs> so, so they woke up and they just watched it and just pretended to be knocked out. That was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny to me. Anyway, right after that, um, Buggy puts some more blades in his hands and he shoots his hand off towards Luffy really fast. Luffy's able to catch it, but then he says disconnect. And then the hand goes super fast and he cuts Luffy's face. And then his hat falls off. So I'm guessing because Buggy has his blades like this, right? Like like this in his hand. So I'm guessing either he cut off a piece of his arm that was still left after he cut it off already and made it do a speed boost and that's how it went really fast. Or maybe he just disconnected like the knuckle part right here to make it go super fast. I'm guessing that's what he did. It happens so fast. I, you don't really see what like what, exactly what he did. But, you know, like for a second, you know, he suits that Luffy. He grabs it. Disconnect. Then it goes super fast past him and it cuts his face. Anyway, Luffy gets really mad and he starts yelling and screaming at Buggy. Buggy's like, what's your problem? <laughs> like, you know, like, wasn't I supposed to scratch you? We're fighting. <laughs> you know, like, I scratched your face with my knives. Are we, I'm not supposed to do that. We're fighting, aren't we? And then we see Luffy's hat, his straw hat, and it's cut a little bit on the side. And Luffy's yelling at him, they're saying, this is the only treasure he really has. This was given to him by, you know, Red Hair Shanks, a great pirate. And a great man, and you damaged it. I'm supposed to give it back to him, and you messed it up. And he just goes, oh, I'm so sorry. And then we see Buggy's hand coming up behind him. And then we see Nami behind a building watching the fight. And she remembers how Luffy was like, you know, a great man gave me this hat. I'm supposed to give it back to him someday when I'm a great pirate. And Nami's like, man, I think anything could, I don't think any, I, sorry, I didn't think anything could phase him. I didn't even think he really cared about the hat like that. But he's getting really upset about it. This is crazy. And then, like I said, Buggy's hand was, like, raising up behind Luffy. Buggy throws one knife at Luffy. He notices it, and he dodges it. And then he brings his hand around, and he stabs it with three blades. And, like, it comes towards um, Buggy. Obviously, Luffy is shocked. And then he he gets, like, a ton of memories about Sanks when he was a kid. And when he gave him his hat, Luffy gets really mad. And he goes, oh, wait. 
So this is Red Hair Saints' his hat, his really hat. No wonder it looks so familiar to me. He takes it off his blade, just throws it on the ground. He stomps on it. And he was like, man, I hate that man. I'm going to hit him until I die. And then Luffy gets really mad and runs up to him. And he goes like, Saints, Saints is the, sorry, Saints is a better man than you'll ever be. Oh, don't ever compare yourself to him. He'll be a way better pirate than you. And Luffy runs up to him. And Buggy goes, oh, oh. he's oh, you're doing this again? He goes, uh, chop, chop, disconnect. And he disconnects his head. But instead of trying to hit his head, Luffy just punches his uh, chest. <laughs> I guess he, I guess, I guess he, I guess Buggy thought he was just going to do the same thing, like trying to grab his neck. But no, it's only he disconnected his head. Luffy just went, boom, and punched him in the chest. And then he fell down. He reconnected his head. And he started coughing. He says, I don't care. I can talk about red hair sinks all I want to. I'm never going to forgive him. As long as there's breath in my lungs, I will hate him and curse him until the until my last breath. And then it's to be continued. That's the matter. That's it. That's the end of the episode. I'm so sorry. I thought this story was like crazy. That's the end. My bad, y'all. I thought this story was like crazy. So that's the end of the episode. Pretty good episode to me. So right now, the only ones that are active are Luffy and. Nami and Buggy, everybody else is passed out and incapacitated. Yeah, literally everybody. Yeah, literally every. Well, besides the Buggy, Buggy's man, but they're not gonna interfere with the fight. So everybody else is knocked out, incapacitated. The only people that are left are Luffy, Nami, and Buggy. So let's see what happens. Obviously, that's what happens. And as you saw, I brought the pillow back. I haven't bring the. I haven't shown the pillow in a One Piece uh, video in a while. Cause like when 